stage, sing in front of 20, 30,000 people, sell millions of records, have people singing their songs, um, to be content to where God has placed you. And I think a lot of these kids have stars in their eyes and they see the, they go to the winter jams and they're like, that's what I want to do with my life. Mm. It's not real practical. Uh, what you want to do is you want to humbly say, Lord, how would you like me to use the gifts that you've given me? And what platform will that be? In Christ I am made into a new creation. Your past away from me. Welcome back to the edition of the Shield of Hope podcast, Hope Speaks, on the Shield of Hope channel. Today we're joined by father and son duo, Christian artist, former new song lead singer, and finalist on America's Got Talent, Michael and Joseph O'Brien. How are you guys doing today? We are doing great fantabulous as i'd like to say <laughs> fantabulous is this your first time in the area my i've been here before by myself i think you've been here with i've been to scranton so i've been in like kind of like the area but never specifically what is this de, 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 drums drums yes i've never been specifically in drums before been drums yeah, and everybody that comes time. here always says are you close to the office yeah <laughs> <laughs> makes sense that. yeah uh where is your favorite spot that you've performed or have played at Mm, well, uh, my experience... Oh, wait, I'll let you go first. <laughs> well, I mean, I was going to say Hawaii, but to be honest with you, there's a place in Gloucester, Virginia, and it's just a great church, small church, and I love the people, and I love going there. So, Yeah, I think the cool, the coolest place that I've ever been able to perform was, um, was the Dolby Theater in California. That was just a really Duh. cool opportunity. Yeah, yeah I mean, I, it, the performance... I won't talk about the performance, but yeah, just seeing... Where they have the, you know, where they hold the Oscars was, I mean, he was there. It was a crazy cool theater. That's so. crazy cool. So yeah, that'd be that'd be my favorite. Uh, Michael, real quick, tell us more about your backstory because of the new song and everything that you've been through, and of course, listening to your interview out there, you said about like opera. Like, was that one of your first basic? Yeah, like, unfortunately, it was like I first? tried to bring opera into the bars, <laughs> which was, <laughs> and if you heard any of that stuff, you would probably just shriek with pain but um it was it i think it was a progression for me trying to figure out where my voice was you know what what kind of music i was going to do and uh that was the you know getting the proper training was very helpful to me and now i still use it even with my pop voice um or my soul voice the raspiness that some, sometimes that i use um so that was a big big help for me back then what made you want to pursue this music career I think when you you know when I got radically saved, I think the first thing I wanted to do was, hey, I want to use these gifts for you. And sh I mean, shortly after that, it was like the Lord opened up doors for me to be able to do that. So, um, you know, I didn't know if I was going to be able to make a living at it, and it, it took some time, I had a lot of sacrifice, and you know, wait, waiting on tables again, and it was it was hard. But it was like, hey, if you if you really want to do this, it's going to cost you something. So. No one else. I put my trust in you. I need you, Jesus. Follow you, because this world has nothing 
Who's the better, Who's singer? The better singer? By far, my dad. Oh my god! By far, we're we're so different. We're very different, though. Yeah, um, but technically, definitely my dad. <laughs> technically, yeah. Well, if you ask that to you know a hundred girls under the age of twenty, <laughs> they're all gonna say just the opposite. But if so. you ask a hundred girls over the age of fifty, <laughs> <laughs> I'll say dad. <laughs> uh, whose singers do you look up to? Um. Well, yeah. So uh, Charlie Puth is one of them. More of his production skills, though. Uh, singers that I really just admire, um, besides my dad, I, I very much admire his voice. Uh, I love David Phelps' voice. Mm-hmm. I love um, uh, Sean Mendes. I, I listen to a lot of him. Um, usually any voice that's actually like very acoustic, um, or like not acoustic itself, but as in they usually like acoustic guitar and very chill and indie kind of folky kind of vibe. I just love those, like something that's really uh, calming, those kind of voices. So it could be like... Um, uh, what's what's his face? Uh, Chris, uh, Drew Holcomb, Drew Holcomb and the neighbors. Yeah, I love Drew Holcomb's okay. voice, and uh, yeah, there's a lot. Of, there's a lot, but uh, those are some of the few. Now I said this once, and I'll say it again. Okay, Sean Mendes. I was waiting for you. Like you yeah. sound just like him, and like your personality. I've never met him, but uh-huh. being on stage and like you just listen to like his interviews, sure. and everything else. You sound just like him. And I was waiting for you. To <laughs> waiting for you to sing a song by him too. Oh really? Yeah, Nile, yeah. The Nile Horn song. You did a great job. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I love Nile. Uh, and uh, but yeah, I've gotten comments sometimes just because of the vibrato. Our vibrato, um, Sean Mendes and I are like very quick and kind of similar. So I- I've gotten that before. But it, thank you, I appreciate it. <laughs> now, uh, Christmas shoes. I want to get in that because that's still a song that uh, probably one of my favorite of all time. All I know right. it makes my mom cry. Sure, man. <laughs> Especially when she watches Rob Lowe on the TV performing oh, the yeah. movie. They say yes. when they cry, they buy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> was that song... Now, I don't know the backstory. So yeah. was that song written and then the movie came out? Or was that song written for the movie? Or did it have no... It was an email okay. that was sent to a radio station. The radio station gave it to a new song, wrote it, and then it became a single. And then the movie came out. And then the Christmas blessing came out after that, and it was like a trilogy, like Star Wars saga. But um, so that's kind of how the, the progression of it. Okay. Just as big as the Star Wars trilogy too. It was, yeah. It was huge. Hey, the, it was voted the saddest <laughs> song in London um, some years ago. Number one saddest song of all time of all gen- genres of music. So I don't know if that's an honor or. Yeah, what an achievement. I can definitely believe that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, a finalist on America's Got Talent. First of all, congratulations on the achievement. Thank you. So, now, to sort of correct it, it's actually quarter finalist. Quarter so, finalist. yeah, okay. so finalist. I mean, I was a finalist in the quarters, so <laughs> <laughs> that worked out. <laughs> Secondly, can you tell us a little bit of what it was like? Yeah, um, it was big. A lot of production things go into the show. So, a lot of behind the scenes work, a lot of interviews. Um, you know, for they say, at least from what I heard some of the producers say, for every hour of TV, there's, or no, no, for every minute of TV, there's an hour of filming. So, you know, uh, if you have a 60 minute show, 60 hours, you know, so it's just, it's a lot and it's, it's very fast paced. You have to just uh, roll with the punches. You can't really plan much because plans always change. Um, but yeah, no, it was a great opportunity and I'm still thankful that I was able to be on the show and get that experience. Um, and yeah, no, so it was big is probably the best word I could describe. Just really big experience, yeah. This question is for both of you. Music speaks, speaks to so many individuals. Whether they can or cannot sing or play an instrument, it is the most rela- it's one of the most relatable aspects of life. Sure, yeah. You can make people smile, you can make people cry. 
A song can tell a story of characters with no faces attached, but put the mm. listeners into the, the story themselves. What story do you wish to tell with the songs you write? I mean, honestly, if it's not pointing back to Christ personally in some perspective, if, even if it's a love song, um, love come. it all has to be Christ and God. And um, to me, what I want listeners to walk away from, yeah, I can use some of these funny things to make people laugh, but ultimately I don't want to waste their time without sharing the gospel or letting them know <clears throat> that Christ is in the center of it all. So to me, that's the ultimate. Um, if I'm going to be a Christian artist, I mean, if I want to be a, just an artist that gets out there, it's probably a different different thing. But that, for me, that's, that's where it's at. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and tagging along with that, so kind of like in addition to that, um, yeah, my, my goal has always been um, because God is a creative God, therefore we are to be creative. Um, and I think it's really cool whenever you take um, these concepts, you know, like maybe putting music to scripture or, or no scripture to music is what I mean. Um, and taking, um, really biblical themes, but creating beauty out of that in a different way, uh, can be really powerful, especially since I would say music nowadays can be very generic and very shallow. Um, so my goal is that I'm able to, to cause people to, um, think more deeply about their faith uh, by being exposed to, uh, in a essence, scriptural beauty. Um, so that, that'd be how I would describe it. But it was never enough. Pain was all that I got, and I always gave up. I was feeling all the weight of every sin and mistake, regretting every step and all the choices I made. Oh. pastor say this once and I've always that he used the things that he would never glory in for his glory so I'll just leave it at that
Yeah, that's that's good. I don't think I could really say anything different than that. Uh, I could, you know, could say that just like David, he was a man after God's own heart, something like, you know, something like that where you, um, you know, people are able to look at you and they, they felt like you uh, exemplified humility and that you counted others more important than yourselves and also, you know, uh, counted Christ as most important and so that people clearly see that um, and that they end up worshiping God because of you and not worshiping you. Um, so, yeah, I think... Um, Two real quick questions here. On an episode a few weeks ago, we talked to Pastor Keith Evans about family life. He expressed that he's starting to see families come into the church, but he's also seeing families leave the church. As a strong family yourselves, how do you keep that going through God? Like, what is your process? How do you guys keep the family aspect? Well, I mean, they're they're getting to an age where they have to decide for themselves. I mean, we there was a time when they were under our roof that you're going to church. I mean, mm-hmm. and, and we, you know, I think looking back, I wish we would have been more solid at one place for a long time. Um, but to me, it's a priority. The Bible says not to, um, what's the scripture? Forsake meeting Don't together forsake meeting or do not neglect together. to meet together. Yeah. So, you know, you can only model that and pray that that becomes a, a priority in their lives when they start having kids and they get married. And mm-hmm. But, yeah, I mean, I wish I wish I could just control all my kids, but <laughs> that's yeah. not going to help them Well, grow. he tracks us, so that works. <laughs> I just talk them. <laughs> tracks us with Live 360. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to end with this for the musicians out there, anybody in their career. If you are someone, if there's someone out there today listening to this podcast and hearing your stories that inspire to be a musician, a lead singer, or in any career, what would you say to them to fulfilling their dream? Hmm. Do you want to help? I mean, I have something to say, but go ahead. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I, I'd say for me, because I, I know what his answer will be, so it's just to kind of, I guess, mix it up. Is I, tend to, I tend to see that a lot of musicians will take themselves way too seriously um and they'll um also forsake especially for people like i'm on a worship team at college and i think uh it's easy to not have a servant's mindset for some weird reason when you're going to a church to to lead worship you can be very like self-focused and like this is what we want oh we're not staying in this hotel well now this is gonna be the worst trip ever and you know they start complaining or it can be easy to do that uh and i i would say to people who being aspiring musicians especially in the christian music industry uh, my dad's taught me this a lot. It's just to come in with the mindset of serving uh, and servanthood, uh, so that when you come to a church, you're they're not, you know, you're you're saying constantly to them like, hey, like thank you for serving us. Is there any way we can serve you? And having that mentality that you know Jesus Christ was the best servant um, among us all, so we should um, seek to be that as well. Um, but yeah, no, definitely reflecting uh, the glory from you know yourself to to Christ and being kind of like a pointer. Instead of, you know, um, a sponge and soaking up everything that everyone tells you, it's like, no, we want you know, to point back. I don't know if that's a good analogy. Anyway, you go. Well, oh, go this is what I would say. And, and, uh, and there's a lot of truth in what you're talking about. He was the greatest leader, but he was the greatest servant of all. Obviously, Jesus was. Um, so I would say this. No matter where God has placed you, because a lot of people have high hopes to, that they're going to be on the big stage, sing in front of 20,000, 30,000 people sell millions of records, have people singing their songs. Um, To be content to where God has placed you. And I think a lot of these kids have stars in their eyes. And Mm. they see the, you know, go to the winter jams, and they're like, that's what I want to do with my life. Mm. It's not real practical. Uh, What you want to do is you want to humbly say, Lord, how would you like me to use the gifts that you've given me? And what platform will that be? Is it going to be in a guitar room, in a guitar with a bunch of old people in a room or somebody who's dying or is it going to be in front of 50 people tonight or is it going to be in front of wherever you send me, Lord, I will go. Um, And I do think that there's a a stigma that comes along with, you know, especially Christianity, Christian music. Um, Hey, let's get out there and get our name out there. Mm -hmm. And I did that for a long, long time, building the cause of Michael O'Brien and not building the cause of Christ. And, you know, I regret it. It's, It's not something I look on. And so I would say, humble yourself before the Lord and let him let Him open the doors and close the doors that he needs to close. And don't con- try to control God. And, and don't put him in a box. And uh, ultimately, he knows what he's doing. And just to trust him. So that's how I would answer that.